If you guys don't already know who's DJing like that, that's my that's my cuz. Family first, DJ Ryan Wolf. You guys can catch him on Z1079. His Instagram is DJ Ryan Wolf. Come in to play me in right quick. Thank you for that, DJ Ryan Wolf. Thank you, thank you. Well, I am... Um, back with another podcast interview but before we get into all that you guys know who i am lockout men and this is a lockout men podcast show and i am back again with another podcast interview for you guys this is what i do this is what i do you know what i'm saying if you guys like stuff like this man make sure y'all get this video a like and we about to get on and bring on our guests this young lady right here, she hails from Alabama, York, Alabama. She been in uh she been in the game for six years, six and a half years, and still going. She started at the ripe old age at 21. So she been driving for all this time. We about to talk to her right quick to see what her life is like in the uh in the trucking industry and see what she brings to the game. I would like to welcome to the show, Miss Bama. Hello, hello, hello. So your name Bama, you 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 just took it upon yourself to take uh the take out the take Alla out and just roll with Bama. Uh, no, actually, my name is Joni, and in truck driving school, I went to truck driving school in Salt Lake City, Utah, mm -hmm. and being from Alabama, everybody thought that I was just so country, and they just love my country accent, so they just gave me the name Bama from there. All right, all right. What was life What was life like for you back uh, back in the day growing up in Alabama? You, you grew up from, in Alabama, right? That's where you're from? Yes. Yes, I was born and raised in Alabama. Um... Honestly, I was raised as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, I was in the household with, with Jehovah's Witnesses, so um, I'm thankful for that. But life, I just had an ordinary lifestyle, you know, real smart in school. Um, it's a total of five girls and one boy. So uh, we have, a, you know, a pretty large family. Like I say, everything was, it was pretty general, you know. We played as kids like everyone else did. Um Went to college, got two degrees, two college degrees, and it's just something I didn't want to do anymore. So I just decided that I would drive truck. Wait, you, you got so you you actually have two college degrees. What 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 are they? Um. Yes, I uh, have a degree in mortuary science. You know, like working in the funeral homes, and I would say my specialty would be embalming. Um. Actually, and uh, another thing I did was phlebotomy. So, um, yeah, I did that before I started driving trucks and I still ended up driving trucks. So, <laughs> so do you, so you have, so you have both, like you physically have both degrees in that, in, in, lob yes, in, physically. in lobotomy and, and the other one is science. What, what made you go for those particular degrees? Um, excuse me. Um, I, I have no idea. Um, I, I didn't. I wanted to work in like the medical field, but I didn't want to work as a nurse or anything because I, I'm really not a people's person. So I was like, well, maybe I can go into the funeral business. You know, of course, that's what mortuary science is. Um, working in the funeral home or whatever. And phlebotomy is all about, you know, you just drawing blood. You know, so I was like, well, let me just try something. I, I at least wanted to have some things under my belt you know, some jobs that, that are never ending. You know, people will always get sick and go to the hospital and people will always die. You know, just like with driving trucks, freight don't always need to be moved. Even, you know, in the COVID-19, truck drivers were considered essential. You know, they needed us at that time. So 
I felt like I did a good job at getting that done. <laughs> yeah, deaf. That's 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 uh that's that's a good business to get into it if 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 you got the stomach for it. <laughs> some some people yeah. some some people don't have don't have the stomach for for deaf. Um the deaf industry. I never you know I now now that I'm getting a little bit older, I I never considered that as an industry, but it's it is when you consider that you got people dying damn near every day. So and it's booming. It's a booming business, you know. So <laughs> wow. <laughs> don't laugh. Don't laugh. I, uh, <laughs> Death is booming, man. I, oh my God, yeah, it is. It's um, it's yeah. it's yeah, it is. It's it's unfortunate when when you look at it that way. Um, so I have you. So you have you worked in a funeral home? What what was have you worked in a funeral home? Yes, I have worked in a funeral home. Um, what was it was a what was, was the experience? experience? What, what was the experience working in a funeral home? Well, people say, you know, people sit up and people breathe and people do this and do that. I've never experienced, experienced any of that now. But, you know, of course, it's a quiet setting, <laughs> of course. Um, but I, I, I really enjoyed it. You know, you're working by yourself. You know, if not, it's about two, three people there, you know. So I really enjoyed it. It's, it's got to be, it's got to be an eerie it's got to be an eerie work environment. Um, not really. Like they say, though, it takes a special kind of person to do that, and I'm just one of the chosen ones. All right, so so, so getting so take us take us through getting a person prepped for their families for viewing. Um, I'd rather not say. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's that intense? Uh, somewhat, yeah. So, yeah, I'd rather not say. Oh, okay. Okay. That's cool. It, 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 that, that's cool. Uh, as a matter of yeah. fact, my, uh, my entanglement. <laughs> thank you, oh, thank you, Jada, for the thank. Thank you, Jada, for the new word. I appreciate it. Yes, entanglement. <laughs> thank you, Jada Pickett, for the new word. I, you know, for for the situation that uh, for the situation. Yes, thank you. I gotta I gotta give it to you, Jada Pickett. I mean, I I never thought that that the situation that that uh, some people could be in has a word and she finally gave it and it's entanglement. You're right. So my uh my entanglement, her uh her brother's uh her brother's wife, grandmother just recently passed. And uh mm-hmm. they they just had the funeral uh just last weekend. Mm-hmm. So definitely rest in peace to um uh, to uh grandma grandma davis you know what i'm saying she was the matriarch of uh of my of of my of my entanglements uh got you brothers situation entanglement i like that i like that word even though i'm separated Uh i've been separated for (laughs) (laughs) i've been separated for seven years but but i didn't realize i didn't realize there was a word for you know what people went through (laughs) so thank you jada thank you um so yeah so how long you uh how, how how long you was in the how long you was in that field before uh before you decided to uh jump out of it I would say because I started uh, college at 18, started driving trucks at 21. So, you know, about three years. Three years. Um, Of course, I got my degree when I was 20, you know, but of course, I still had to do my clinicals. You know, you had to go inside the funeral home and work um, while I was in school. So I would say like three years total. Three years. So now let me ask now let me ask you this. How how did the family how how did the family react to you getting into 
getting into that particular business? Um, actually, that's funny you ask because my family knows that I'm a daredevil. Um, they know I would try anything at least once. So they really wasn't surprised at all by it. If you like really knew my personality and you really know me, nothing that I do will surprise you, you know? So it's like, oh, okay, Joni's going to be a, you know, mortician. Oh, okay. That, that sounds like her, you know? So. Um, my parents was okay with it. Uh, I think they laughed more than they did cry, you know, so <laughs> that's how that went. All right. So you, you, so will it be safe to say that the Adams family is one of your favorite movies? Somewhat. I, I can agree <laughs> about 99.9%. Yes. <laughs> that, and, and I would have to say fear factor. So yeah. Fear factor. What about uh? What, yeah. Let me let me ask you. Let me ask you this now: Is is a mortician? Uh, is that on par with being a uh, what do you call what do you call that person that uh that works for the a corner? A what? Is it a corner? No, he they work for the police department. Corner, corner. So yeah, is is a mortician is on the same par as a corner? Um, it can be, you know, I actually know a guy, um, that owns a funeral home and he's now a corner at a young age and I have really looked up to him for that. But, um, yes, you know, you can, you can do that. Yes. You know, actually the corner, they doesn't, they don't work in the funeral home or do any embalming, you know, and stuff like that. They can now, but you know, they just really go out to a scene and pronounce that person dead, you know? So, Yeah. You would, you would most definitely want to have the experience if you're going to be a corner. All right. So before we, uh, before we switch gears, uh, I, I, ju- I guess I just have one last question. Has there, okay, has there been now? I, I only, of course, I only seen it in movies, but you know the reality, you know the react, uh, you know the fiction versus reality, you know, is very different. So. For a person that actually worked in the industry, have anybody happened to shock you? Have have anything shocking happened to you while working at a funeral home? Like, did somebody like wake up or or jump or um no? No, as I said before, no, like, I have never experienced anything shocking. Like, I, I just never have it. Oh, okay. Never have. Uh-uh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's what's up. That That is what's up. Woo. That is what's up. All right. So, let's switch gears. So, what inspired you to get into trucking? Well, like, 75% of my family drives something, either it's a truck or a school bus or something. And the other half are nurses, you know. So um, just growing up, always seeing somebody in a truck, I was like, you know what? I think I want to go drive trucks, you know. And most of the women in my family um, are truck drivers. I had my mom to drive trucks, um, my auntie Tamika, my auntie uh, Sequisa. I mean, I have a cousin, Janelle, to drive trucks. Um, It's a lot of women, you know, that that drive trucks. I have an auntie, Roberta. She drives school bus. My dad drives school bus. You know, so it's like a lot of people drive something. You know, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I guess just growing up in that, I mean, that's just what you're looking at all the time. Like, I have an uncle, Uncle Joe. He he owns trucks. You know, he owns his own business. Um. Uncle James, Uncle WB, like it's it just like uh, they just own their own stuff. They drove trucks, so just growing up around it is like okay, that's what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> All right, what school? What did you did you go to a trucking school to obtain your license, or did you go or did you went yes. to a trucking company? No, I went to um, yes, I went to a trucking company, CR England in Salt Lake City, Utah, and a lot of people talk down on CR England, but I'm gonna be real. I really benefited from going to CR England in Salt Lake City. Like, I really enjoyed it. I mean, everybody's not me, so everybody's not going to have the same experience, but I really enjoyed it. Okay, okay. 
Yeah, friend uh friend of uh, a YouTube friend of mine, he uh he he got his career in trucking from uh CR England. You probably might be familiar okay. with him. His name is Guilty Seven One Eight. Yeah, he uh yeah. yeah he went through uh CR England and obtained his license through there, but of course he didn't stay long. Are you still with CR England? Uh no. <laughs> How, how long? How long? How long you stayed with CR England? Because I, I I know if you if you obtain your license through them, you had to fulfill a contract. But how how long did you actually stay with them? Enough time just stop playing my license. Hold on, what about me again? Enough time just to obtain my license. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you so so I did we did you know. So did they did they come after you for 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 the for the balance of the of the license? Of course they did, and I just paid in full, so oh, okay. they left me alone. I left them alone. You know, <laughs> it's only right that I owed them. You know. <laughs> so you wasn't. So you wasn't. Uh, <laughs> so you you just said bump. You just said bump working for them, but you but the experience of obtaining your license through the company yeah. was was a good one though. It was a great one. Yes, it was a great. One. Would you suggest? Would you suggest other new drivers uh, that that can't, you know, that have to obtain their license by way of company? Would you suggest them going to CR England too, or? Uh, yes, I actually do that now. Yeah. So if you, anybody want to ask me where do I get my CDL from or how can they obtain this, I would strongly suggest only in Salt Lake City, Utah. I haven't been seeing other locations, so. Yes, I suggest you guys go there. How many uh, how many companies you 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 went through before you you got comfortable with the one you're with now? Um, I think it's four. Yeah, four. I think maybe five. All right. So what's your what's your uh, so six and a half years? What's what's your experience out here? Uh, what's what's um, what's the real life of a lady truck driver out here? Y'all, I, I get up every day. I, I do my makeup. You know, I put on my dresses, you know, my shorts or whatever I'm comfortable with. I have even worn heels out here. Now, I'm going to just be honest with you. Um, I have walked in a truck stop and I have, you know, guys have said some things to me. But how can I be upset? You know what I'm saying? If I got on heels and a dress and makeup, you know. Da, da, what was the, I, I was going to ask you. I, I was going to ask you what's the, you know, after you do all your nails and all like that. Because you, on your videos, man, you got some mean ass nails, dude. I, I gotta tell oh, you. Oh yeah, I gotta keep the nails. I, I, man, gotta you got man. I, I I hate to. Ooh, never mind. I hate to be. I hate to be. I hate to be. I I I hate to be the victim of 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 them nails. Them bad boys. Them them bad oh, boys yeah. mean. They, they're not sharp though. They they're just long. They're just long and they're showy, you know. And I'm extra, so they they describe me to the feet, you know. I'm extra, so yeah. I like even when I go sit in her chair, she just asks me what colors do I want. I tell her, and boom, there it is. Her work of art. You guys, her Instagram is tattooed Barbie, and her Facebook is Kanisha Brewer. All right, okay, in Decatur, Georgia. That's what's up. That's what's <laughs> up. What's her What's her name again? Shout her out again. Her name is Tattoo Barbie on Instagram and Kanisha Brewer on Facebook. All right, that's what's up. Tattoo Barbie. So she uh, so she does them. So she does them nails, man. I mean, your nails. Like I said, Every I'm I'm look, I'm looking at your nails right now, man. Them bad boys is woo. Mm -mm. Definitely oh, yeah. don't want to. Definitely don't want to get in the cat fight with you. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> uh, so what? So what are the other reactions that 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 these guys out here give you when they see you get out of the truck? Um, you know, they gonna look, they gonna say, Wow, you know, oh, let me tell you the main reaction I get. Okay. Your man let you drive trucks by yourself? You know, your man let you drive trucks like that? Look, bruv, you wanna know I'm single, just ask that. You know, if you wanna know if I'm single, just ask me that. Don't don't come up to me some of some your man let you do this, your man let you do that, just ask me if I'm Bruh. single, you know? <laughs> most what? <laughs> <laughs> so you and, and most men out here 
they they only do what you allow them to do. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not even really the truckers you have to worry about. It's the, it's the outside people. You know. So I haven't had a bad um a bad disagreement with the truck driver. If I say leave me alone or I don't want to be bothered, cool. That's what it is. Most of the time they'll back off. You know. But sometimes I play along with them. Like it's just so funny. You you know you may end up making their day, making your day. You know. It, it, it can be funny, and some truckers can say some stuff to just really piss you off. But, you know, that that's their main question. Your man lets you drive with that on, you know, you in the truck by yourself, you know, stuff like that. Of course, you never tell a man that you're alone, people. Women, you never tell a man that you're alone in the truck by yourself. So, uh, yeah, most guys, they just want a little thing. You know, most of them just want a, a little one night, you know, probably never talk to you again. I don't know, so. You know, most of them are married. Most of them just haven't had that touch, you know, in a long time. You see what I'm saying? So most of the time, that's normally what it is. Well, of course, that's what my guy friends say, you know. Um, But they don't even want a relationship. Some probably just want to cuddle with you. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> mm. So that's. But they will try you. They will try you, though. So what? So what? So other than, other than that, what other experience out here? Out, out here that uh that that you can that you can let us know that you that you went through uh while driving um like any experience any, any experience good i'm gonna bad. be straight up and i'm gonna say this i think i think women at the shippers and receivers are haters because like they always get an attitude with female drivers i don't know if it's because we're drivers and they feel I, I don't know. Like I, I think that they're haters. They always get an attitude with us. What? And I was recently. What was? Hmm? What? Can you can you describe an issue that you might have had with one of them? Okay, like for example. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. Okay, it's like so they can see you standing there, right, mm -hmm. with paperwork in your hand, so they know you're there to check in. And it's like they're just talk to coworkers, like you're not even standing there, you know. And then there's like, well, what door are you in? What door do you have to bag in on? What's your phone number? We'll give you a call when, when you're ready. You know, stuff like that. Like, it, it's not even that serious, you know? Uh, okay. so It's not even that serious. So, you know, it's like, dang, you know, I'm in a good mood, but you just messed up my whole mood, you know? Man. But, yeah, so I, I really think most of them are haters. Man, well, yeah, <laughs> there is some issues with uh with a lot of shippers and receivers. It's just not the women; it's the guys too. You know what I'm no, saying? No, it's not. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Yeah, it's the it's the guys too, man. Because there'd be some fucking dicks out here when when coming to a yeah. shipper and receiver. I mean, yeah. I just I, I just I just had an experience just last week with uh with with a person out of receiver, and then. Another issue this past weekend, uh, dealing with a dealing with a person at a receiver. So yeah, it's not just the uh, it's not just the women. It's 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 the men too, man. It's the men too. They right. they be on some they be on some other shit also, man. They definitely be on some other right. shit. Right, exactly. What um, uh, if if trucking wasn't the thing for you, if you wasn't if you wasn't able to, you know, if you wasn't able to get, you know, get whatever you could get out of trucking, what would have been the plan B job for you? Uh, I probably would have still been in the field on home because trucking actually was my plan B. Uh, so I probably actually would have still been in the field on home. Okay. Uh, jumping back to the, jumping back to the funeral home, was, was the funeral home good money? I, I would imagine that it is, right? If you know where everything is what you make it, you know, you, you do good work, you show that you do good work, everybody will eventually come to you, you know. So, yeah, it, money can be made in the funeral business. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah. all right, so, so, man, I, I, I as far as, <laughs> as far as you, as, as far as you go, uh, -huh. uh in your one video, you was talking about leasing. Are are you a lease driver or are you a company driver? Yes, yes. Um, I'm a lease driver. Yes. Okay. So what made what what made you what made you decide to get into leasing? Um, I just heard 
a lot of people talking about it, you know, um, being curious. And, like, you know, the video that I did make on my YouTube, um, the new, the truck lease for beginners, I wish someone would have laid that out for me before I have started doing that. I have been very successful at being a lease driver. Don't get me wrong. But I wish somebody would have laid that out the same way that I laid that out, you, you understand, or something similar, um, because I had no idea really what I was getting into. Um, I just wanted to do it because I was like, okay, I, I want to make more money, you know, but... Yeah, you're you're making more money, but you still have a truck note, you still have insurance, you know, you still have all of the other deductions. But if I can make forty one cent doing that and I can make forty six cent being a company driver without a truck note, you know, it's really about the same, you get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it has its pros, it has its cons. I have more good weeks than I have bad weeks. So So Yeah. So lease so are you are you in a are you in a lease purchase? A lease purchase to own, or are you in a lease renting situation with 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 your company? No, to own. Okay, so how 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 long you got to go before you actually you know pay off the truck or the contract? Um, I have another like year and four months. Okay. So I'm close, but but I was involved in an automobile accident. Um, on June 18th. Was it so that kind of left me was it, a whole lot? Was it you know? was it automobile or semi? Semi. Okay, so you was in so you was in so you was involved in the semi versus automobile accident. Yes, I was involved in the semi accident. Yeah. Uh, tell us what happened. Um. I think I'll wait to talk about that. Okay. You, yeah, you, yeah, you don't have, yeah. You, you don't have to if you don't want yeah. to. Um, was it with the comp? Was it with the company you're with now, or was it with a previous company? No, it's with the, it was with the company I'm with now. Oh, okay, okay. So I obviously yeah. you're still with with the company though, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I would say like the the of course I have like a lot lot of pain you know from the accident mm-hmm. but the most painful thing is and i know material things are not everything i i have been taught that as a child you know but putting money into something and to just lose it all you know that would be the most painful thing ever wait run that by me again like i say yes i i suffer a lot of pain you know bodily pain from my injury uh-huh but the most painful thing, which I know material things, material things aren't everything. You know, I learned that as a child that, you know, material things aren't everything. But the most painful thing is putting a lot of money into my truck and now everything is gone. You, you get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I got you. I got you. Yeah. So you was a, yeah. so you was a lease driver. You was a lease driver then as well before the, yes. before the situation. Yes. yes. Okay. And did, did you, you had to. What you had to start a whole new lease with what the truck you got now, or was it a continued lease? Um, I actually don't know yet. Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm not sure yet. What I am, yeah. I am, uh, I am happy that uh, that you still here. Um, I, yes, I am happy. I'm I, I am, I am happy it. that you still here. Um, sometimes, and I'm, I'm about to play the lawyer role for a second. Sometimes it's not always best to talk about any type of particular accident, especially if it's still up under, you know, if you're still going right. through uh, right. the legal process of it. Because usually how people want to come on and um, they want to jump right on Facebook, right on social media after an accident uh-huh. and all like that. And what they fail to realize is that the information that they throwing up on the on the gram or on Facebook or on anything yeah. like that still can be used. You know what I'm saying? Because you're putting it in the public. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, while everybody's sitting there saying, oh, I'm glad you're all right. I'm sorry to see and yada, 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 giving you all condolences and you know, and, and people over here asking you, you are right. And you typing back like, yeah, I'm OK. I'm, you know, just glad and yada, yada, yada. But then when you go to court, you're trying to 
uh, you you trying to you know get a claim over you saying that my back hurt, my neck hurt, my legs hurt, but yet they'll pull up that Facebook post over here talking about you don't look hurt, you don't look hurt to me. <laughs> right, right. You don't look hurt to me. So yeah, you know, just be wary of whatever. You, well, be wary. Period of uh of what you put out yeah. there on uh on 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 social media man social because media. it can it can yeah. and will come back and bite you in the ass though for real yeah, yeah can, that's true. can and will but i am happy i am happy that uh i'm, I'm happy that you are all right and like i said you definitely don't have to you don't have to talk about it or anything like that because we don't want they we don't want them to use this against you <laughs> you know what right. i'm saying um but as far as leasing, though, um, you you felt that you 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 make more money. Did the company talk you into it? Because you know, like I said, I'm I'm not a fan of leasing. But did the company talk you into it? Like you know, they when you came to the orientation, they told you that you know being a lease driver is a hell of a lot better than being a company driver. No, no, they didn't put it like that. Like they didn't. You know, most companies were kind of were kind of like forced to, you know, into leasing. But no, this company, um, they didn't do that. You know, they actually did, um, what what's the word I'm looking for? Comparisons. You know, to being a lease driver, company driver. But my biggest thing is forced dispatch. So, you know, that may not be, you know, it may not be a problem to you, you know. But lease driving at this particular company, company, um, is no forced dispatch. So I'm cool with that. So I could. Run how I want to. If I don't want the load, I don't have to take it, you know. But as far as being a company driver at this particular company, you know, it's forced dispatch. There's some places that I don't like going to, you know, but at least I don't have to go, you know. So that was the biggest thing for me. And um, home time, home time, home time, home time. Um, I go home whenever I get ready. I live in Atlanta, so, you know, we are always coming through Atlanta. Mm-hmm. So it got me home, you know, pretty regular. And that's what I really, really liked about it. You, but you, you, you're over the road driver, though, right? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm, you, you have to be an over the road driver to be a. Yeah, yeah, you know. I'm more, I'm more of over the road, yeah. So, I, what's the, what's the truck payments, uh, that that you occur in every week? It, this, this is an every week payment, though, uh-huh. right? Uh huh. Uh huh. Sadly, they were seven twenty five weekly, and like that was for a twenty eighteen. So that was seven twenty five weekly, and if you get a, a nineteen, that would be eight twenty five, a twenty nine twenty five. You know, so it went up a hundred dollars by every year, or it went down a hundred dollars by every year. So I still, you know, seeing money even after my payment. You know, so like I say, it has its good, it has bad. But if you like want to be out for a week, or if you get sick, you don't get sick days, you don't get vacation days. So if you off a week, you're in the hole the following week. You know. So you got to bust your butt double now to get out the hole. But the good thing is that they they pay percentage and not by the mile. So that's the good thing about yeah, it. Yeah, but being that, but being that you're, but being that you're a lease driver, um, and you lose, you you you, you stay home for more than uh, an extended amount of time event that you you will come back in the in a in a red right that that first paycheck ain't no ain't, uh-huh. ain't gonna always be that gravy how long right. if uh, how long not to say that not to say that you maybe have occurred anything but in your opinion since you've been leasing how long would it take a person to come up to, to come back into the black i'm going to say about another week I'm going to say about another week. That's, that depends on, of course, your driver, manager, your broker, your agent, whoever. But um, if you, okay, so I'm on a dedicated lane. Let's just put it like that. I'm on a dedicated lane. I know, and I can do my home time like that because I know how, you know, what loads I'm going to get. I know what my loads are going to pay. I'm all about consistency. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I know how I can set my home time, you know, stuff like that. But if I want to stay home a little bit longer, yeah, I might end up in the red. So I need to do, you know, I need to work double. So I probably will have to go out for like two more weeks, you know, in order to get out the hole plus bring home at least five, six hundred dollars if you can get what I'm saying. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, so it'll bring me out the hole just a little bit. But I'll be clear, though, you know. Okay. Is, but that's where a lot of drivers are so fat that want to leave. They want to stay home. They get one $3,000 take Friday. They stay at home till next Friday, you know, and then they come back out, mm-hmm. you know, and, and they think that that $3,000 check is going to last like it doesn't work like that. <laughs> I can imagine. So, like, you always want to I mean, out of that $3,000 yeah, check, yeah. They, they, they taking all the expenses out of that check, right? No, that that would be what they have. Oh, uh, that would be the actual brain home. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So mm-hmm. three. And I'm actually going to do a video on that with someone that bought home three thousand oh, dollars. Okay. So because like the video I put up the other day, it was kind of like a, you know, it was in the low. It was like a thousand dollars, you know. So I'm gonna I'm show them like every week is not a bad week like that. So I'm gonna make a video. My next video will probably be today tomorrow. It would be a driver that has brought home three thousand dollars, you know, just to show that it is some good. And lease in the truck. So being the lease driver, you 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 don't have you you work you you drive for the company, but you're not getting none of the company benefits. How can you how what what can you uh explain to the new people that that's thinking about going lease of how how they can occur to get in their uh you know health insurance, vision insurance, 401k that the company would normally offer uh, a company driver. Now, they do offer health, dental, vision. They offer short term, long term. They offer all of that. So I've never leased from a company that didn't offer that. But I'm quite sure if they don't, you would want to already have that before you get there. You know. Um, but the company I made, they offer everything. So. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so let's uh, yeah. so before we get up out of here, let's uh, let's uh, touch on your YouTube. Uh, where, of course, <laughs> nails and trucking. <laughs> I mean, stop laughing at me. Huh? Stop laughing. At me. <laughs> no, no, not laughing. <laughs> not laughing at you. I can tell you that much. Because, like I said, when I seen that when uh, when Cassie hit me to that first video, all I could just see was those nails going back and forth. <laughs> Who is Cassie? Uh, she's a uh, she's a uh, she's a YouTuber as well, and she uh, came across your came across your uh, video, and she uh, she uh, okay, tell Cassie I said yeah, hi. She reached out to me and said, "Hey, you should you should uh, talk with this young lady right here." I was like, "Okay, let me go and look." And oh, I, thanks, Cassie. And I seen them nails going back and forth i'm like whoa them nails though yeah. <laughs> so the so how long how long you been uh how long you been a youtuber and what's uh and what you want people to get out of it um i think my oldest video is like 11 months but i never tried to pursue my youtube like that up until now because i have so much time on my hands now because i'm out the force um but yeah it's been like a year almost and um, I just want people to know the facts, the facts about trucking, you know, like, like my, what I post is like the down and dirty. I'm, I'm not being around the bush or anything. I want y'all to see what really goes on out here. You know, um, everything ain't gravy. Everybody say, oh, truck, so you're a truck driver, you make a lot of money. No, like, <laughs> that's not it, baby. Like every week ain't good, you know. So that that's what I really want people to get from it. Like, just you know, you still want to save your money, you know, stuff like that. It, it's the real world, you know. Everybody not your friend out here. Um, don't give a lot of people your information out here. So that's that's what I'm trying to to get, you know, tell people. Well, you know, you 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 know, you're in a you're in a you're in a saturated niche. You know that, right? I just just wanted to let you know that you're definitely in a saturated uh, niche as far as uh, YouTube truckers go. You know what I'm saying? But uh, but if you can but if you yeah. can find uh, if you can find a niche uh, that nobody else hasn't touched on, then yeah, your channel your channel right. will grow. It, it, right. it will definitely grow. Right. It will definitely grow out here. So uh, right. so yeah, that's uh. 
There we go. So yeah, your channel will grow. So you know, much success to you. Right. Much success to you on your uh, on your YouTube. So definitely uh, get it up. What uh what other social media outlets that you're that you're at? Um, I'm on Facebook at Bell Film. That's the B E L L E M F E M M E, and Instagram at Diesel Period Diva. That's with two A. Oh, uh, Diva with two A. All right, spell spell it out. Spell it out for me because I'm on Instagram uh, now. So it's D what? D I E S E L Period. Oh wait 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 wait! I think hold on hold on I think I. Hold on, I think I see. Uh, no, that's Diesel. Wait, Diesel Dial. All right, Diesel Dot. What now? Diva. D I V A A. Oh, okay. D I V A. Uh, uh, you can't miss me now. Don't even do me. You cannot miss. Hold on, Diesel, uh, Diesel Diva. Okay, yeah, I see. Okay, yeah. I hit that file. Uh, okay, yeah, I hit that. Swim, swim, swim. yeah, 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 I, I, yeah. I, 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 I see you. I, I, I see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, 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 see I, I know. You. I know. Uh, is, you said you said you're everything. You're, you're everything you dreamed of, but with a belly. God damn. I'm everything you dreamed of, but with a belly. God, God damn it, man. <laughs> All right, so what 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 um what advice you got? Well, being that you're a lease driver, what advice you got for uh for the uh, females that's coming out here that's thinking about going lease? Do your homework, people. Remember to always ask questions. And remember, no question is a stupid question, okay? All right. Just do your homework. If that's what you're looking for, go with it. If not, move on. All right. That's what's up, man. And on that note, we about to get on up out of here. My cousin. Well, first thing first. My cousin. There we go. He's about to play us out. He's about to play us out. And I just want to tell my mom and dad, thanks for having a beauty like me. Thank you, John and Glenda. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. Hold up. Wait, wait, wait a minute, Brian. Hold on, Brian. Hold on, Brian. Hold on. I got to I got to do my I got to do my outro. <laughs> and if you guys no. wants to come on and and holler at your boy, you can do that. You can hit me up at the Lockout Men podcast uh at gmail.com. You can come over to Instagram, see me over there, hit me up in the DM. Or if you guys have anybody that you want me to talk to, definitely let me know in the comments below and I'll reach out to them and try to get them on the show and chop it up with them for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We just sitting here having a good old time like we're at Denny's or something like that. That's what we do over here. If you like this video, definitely make sure you give it a like. And if you like the channel, make sure you subscribe. Don't forget to do that share comment and hit that uh and hit that bell and that all button so you can get all the videos that drops when i drop them all right i am your humble host lockout men thank you to uh hold on right quick i gotta bring i gotta bring that button up there's a lot of buttons over here that i gotta keep up with but i like to thank uh <laughs> i like to thank bama for coming on and all that good stuff. Thank you for having me. Not a problem. Thank having. you very much. Thank you very much. And now my cousin will come in and play us out. You guys have a blessed one. Y'all stay safe out there. And uh, I will definitely come back at you guys with, uh, with another video. You guys take it easy and I'll talk to you later. Bama, you don't have to yeah. hang up yet. Yeah. So hold on until the uh -huh. music play out. Everything you drink though, but with a belly. But that's it. <laughs> that's it.